Hey, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutri Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. This video is about the history and future of stem cell therapy. And we're going beyond stem cells with this list right here. But let's go like all the way back to when humans first started walking on planet Earth. They ate glands. So eating glands is a version of stem cell therapy, if you will. Now let's fast forward to uh, the late 1800s. They actually did the transplantation of whole glands. What that means is they would take the patient's skin, open, cut it open, and they would take the a thyroid, let's say, of a lamb or a pig, and they would put it underneath their skin and then sew it back up. And over the course of a couple months, that bump right there would then dissolve, and they knew that the uh, gland was being used for nutrition by the body, and the person would get better. Hypothyroidism would go away. And uh, you could see it in their, in their face, you could see it in their demeanor, and they kept careful notes on the symptomatology of these patients with uh, transplantation of whole glands. So moving into the early 1900s, we have live, live cell therapy. What that is is you take the live cell, let's, let's say of a, of a heart, a beating heart, and somehow get those cells into the patient. And you had like 20 hours to do that. Once that heart cell was extracted and it was alive, you, had, you only had a very short window to get it into the patient. And the next one is live cell extract therapy. So what that means is they would take this, these live cells and do something to them first, maybe put it in salt water or some other solution to break open the cell membranes, to extract out the RNA and the DNA, to get the contents within the cell. So there's different solutions that they would do to get live cell extract therapy. So this could be used as an injection or as a pill. The live cell therapy was primarily um, an injection. Now here we have stem cells. So a stem cell is a naive, baby cell that has not yet turned into uh, an organ cell like a liver cell or a skin cell or an eye cell and it needs to be told what to do so you can get injected with stem cells and they just sit around and they're not turn turning into anything in particular quite yet and there's some uh, advancements in the technology on this you can get um, different stages of stem cells you can have brand new baby ones or you can have like the teenager ones that they, they're going to get into, a, they're going to become a, a liver cell later. So you can like take that as a pill. We actually sell that. We have stem cell pills that are slightly differentiated, you know, away from the original stem cell into a liver cell or nervous system tissue or something like that. So stem cells, um, that's the next therapy. Now, after that, um, I put in here PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma, and um, somewhat related, somewhat not to what I'm talking about, but what it is, it's your blood extracted and they spin it down to get a higher concentration of platelets in the plasma, in the blood plasma, and they inject that and that's very pro-healing. So a dentist will pull out a tooth and now you have a hole in your jaw. They can pack it and fill it with uh, PRP and it regrows and two months later now you can get a, a canal or a, a root drilled in there for a fake tooth. You can get PRP injections for your face it fills out the collagen behind your skin your face looks plumper, you look younger. Um, you can do PRP to regrow your hair on your scalp. It's very healing to get the, the PRP done. Um, but the next one is exosomes. So this is the next evolution in all of this. Now an exosome, it's not a cell, it's not DNA. It's a packet of tools and information that a cell will put together and then deliver and outside, it'll leave the cell and go to neighboring cells. And it tells the cells what to do and how to do it. It gives the, the tools to do it too. So I think of it as like a care package. So the care package has, you know, like a letter that's nice and says things. And then you have in the care package food and tools. And the cell opens up this exosome and says, oh, look, our body, the body's under stress. So let's, you know, build up our fortifications and get ready for some stress. So that's what they'll do is they'll put a cell under stress. The exosomes then that are being made are the care packages for stress. They collect that and they put it into um, a product that can be consumed you know, by the patient. So that might be an injectable. Um, and later there'll, there'll be creams and stuff, but this is kind of a new um, medical technology. So exosomes, um, they have, I have a list right here that I wanna go over. They have more than 200 signaling proteins, so anti-inflammatory um, signals, angiogenic, which means growing of uh, arteries, 
anti-tumor signals, so they're studying this for cancer, anti-metastasis of cancer. It can inhibit cell death, it can keep the cells uh, living longer, and it can regenerate and heal, and heal, like it's got signals for regeneration and healing. So cells that are living longer are also healing. So exosomes also include messenger RNA. So what does that mean? It's like the on switch. So you have all these tools, you have these anti-inflammatory uh, proteins and stuff, but what do you do with them? You gotta turn them on. So the mRNA does that, it turns on regenerative mechanisms, anti-inflammatory signals, and then the angiogenic growth factors to get new blood vessels, more circulation. It also has microRNA, that's the off signal. So it can turn off chronic inflammatory signals, turn off matrix catabolic enzymes. What that means is it'll turn off the enzymes that are breaking down your tissue and, and destroying things. Catabolism means you're eating yourself, your cells are eating, uh, eating away. And, uh, but exosomes are not small cells. They're, they're, they have no DNA, they have no mitochondria. It's for cell-to-cell -cell direct communication. That's what exosomes are. So now this is, all of these are natural and very, very pro-healing. The only thing that's unnatural about them is maybe you know, making a solution to extract from the live cells or the way that you deliver it maybe by injection. Like that would be unnatural. But when you look at all of this, there's healing, healing, healing. It's in the healing process to have stem cells, to have a lot of platelets, to have exosomes. So we're not bypassing the human body. We're not bypassing Mother Nature with these therapies. Now, in the United States, the research on stem cells was shut down back during the George W. Bush era because of uh, they were used, some people were using aborted fetal cells, so the cells from aborted babies. So they shut down everything. At the time, they were also using placenta cells or cord blood cells, uh, cord cells, I should say. And anyway, so that didn't need to be shut down when it was. So the United States was far behind up until I think it was about six years ago or it was less than 10 years ago when they opened the laws back up and now American doctors are flying to other countries and learning how to do stem cell injections and learning the, learning the evolution of the science. So this is what we have to look forward to, exosomes. That's like our top-notch uh, medical alternative therapy. Currently, all I know is it's by injection, and I know that in a few months there will be a cream on the market. So now consider with the exosomes, it's one shot. Versus stem cells, it's 12 shots. And exosomes work for a greater number of people, whereas stem cells does, it still works for a great number of people, but the exosomes have a better uh, response rate by more people. And um, over time, you know the cost will go down because we have the free market in the United States, healthcare mostly. And, but right now, a shot of exosomes is $2,500. Um, but compare that again with stem cells, it's much cheaper. So there's my take on the history and future of stem cells. If you like this information, please give me a thumbs up. Share, subscribe. Share this with people who are interested in their health. There's really healthy people that want to stay healthy. They, stay, they want to stay looking young and feeling young and have good metabolism. Their diet's already good. They already exercise. They've already been through a whole bunch of detoxing with various products. Now they're just looking for rejuvenating their cells beyond eating broccoli and healthy meat. They want to do something like as an intervention to really keep their cells as healthy as possible. And this might be something that they're interested in doing. So this video here is a good overall introductory um, landscape of this subject. So please share with other people who would like to be healthy. See you at the next video.